for pomp and circumstance. I would now like to ask everyone to stand for the national anthem performed on video by FCW band seniors and remain standing for a recording of the West High Alma Mater.
Please be seated. Included in the group from band that just performed our national anthem were two students who, after the audition process, were selected as first chair in the state. They are Braden Purcell on saxophone and Andrew Klassen on trumpet. Would you two please stand to be recognized as two of the finest musicians in the state of Missouri? Thank you, boys. Welcome to the 2021 commencement program. We are very proud to be here this morning and excited to be here this morning to honor the Fort Zumwalt West High School graduating class of 2021. Very special event in the, yeah, there you go. There are a number of guests that I wanna introduce this morning, but before I do that, we have another musical selection. We will hear Seasons of Love performed by our senior choir. I would like one member of the senior choir to stand. Her name is Buffy Parrish, and she was a two-time All-State selection. Buffy? <clears throat> it is my pleasure at this time to introduce our stage guests and ask them to please stand and remain standing until I've called all of their names. If you would hold your applause until everyone is standing, I would appreciate it. First, we have Dr. Bernard DeBray, Superintendent of Schools. Mr. Mike Swearingen, President of the Board of Education, Mrs. Erica Powers, Vice President of the Board of Education, and the following members of our Board of Education, Thomas Emmons, John Callahan, Craig Moore, Gabriel Helms, District Office Administrators, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources, Dr. Henry St. Pierre, and Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, Mrs. Jennifer Waters. In addition to our stage guests, 
I would like to ask the Maribel Fallon, Bill Hennessy, to stand and be recognized. He is to my left. Thank you, Mayor. We are also privileged to have two councilmen here this morning, Dave Hinman and Mike Elam. Please stand and be recognized. Dr. DeBray will now address the class of 2021. Thank you, Neil. On behalf of the Board of Education, I'd like to welcome you to this 21st graduation ceremony for West High School. I've been around for all 21, and 20 of them were pretty normal. This one's a little different, because no one in 100, over 100 years has gone to school in a pandemic. And I want to thank our students. First of all, I want to congratulate them for reaching this milestone in your lives and your, your, your graduation day. But I have to thank you for being cooperative throughout this full year, for wearing masks, for social distancing, for keeping your hands sanitized. You know, we could not have made it without your cooperation. We couldn't have made it without our teachers teaching under the most unusual of circumstances. And certainly we couldn't have made it without our parents supporting us throughout the full year. We were the largest school district in the state of Missouri out of 520 that came back face to face. We made it through the whole year. We made it. There were no shutdowns. And what we did was show the rest of the state that it could be done. And our kids benefited from being here face to face. And I'm afraid many other districts uh, lost ground on that. So uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everybody's cooperation. That's a big deal today because this is a milestone in your lives. You have milestones, several milestones you'll meet. This is one of the big ones, high school graduation. You met all the requirements of the Board of Education of the state of Missouri. The board's here today to graduate you. It doesn't, you're not graduated by the principals, you're not graduated by me, you're graduated by the Board of Education. They established the rules for our school district, and they are thrilled to be here. I, I know that. Uh, this is probably the best day of the year for all of us, me included, to see our 450 students graduate and go on to the next stage of their life. I get the privilege of making a, just a few announcements today. Um, the first one I want to do is I want to thank the parents that took the lead in planning the all-night uh, graduation party that's going to go on later today. Um, this is planned by the parents. Uh, so let me uh, just mention the parents that took the lead in, this plan, in these plans. Uh, please stand as I read your name. Angie and Rich Reese, Jackie Weidert, Carrie and John Spaulding, Laura Powell, Karen and Jamie Wincher, Tamika Warren, and Meg Verstrad. Please stand and be recognized by our parents. These all-night graduation parties started in 1987 when we only had one high school. And each, as we've opened uh, succeeding high schools, we've, we've kept that tradition. Keeps our kids safer, keeps them busy on one of the most exciting uh, nights of their lives. This is Memorial Day weekend. And you know, when we first started graduations on Memorial Day weekend, um, I don't know if we, if, if we realized how important it was. Memorial Day weekend, just to give you a little bit of background, because I'm a history teacher, uh, Memorial Day started as long ago as 150 years. It was called Decoration Day, and it was started by Civil War widows who went out and placed flowers on the graves of some of the 650,000 soldiers who lost their lives in that conflict. Over the years, it has been known from De Decoration Day now to Memorial Day. In 1971, it became a national holiday so that we would celebrate Memorial Day on the last Monday of May. In, in 2000, Congress passed a law that on, at 3 o'clock on Memorial Day, which will be Monday, that would, there would be a moment of silence to remember those veterans who had gone before us and given their lives 
for all the freedoms we have today. It's been said that Memorial Day really has allows us to have all our other holidays. Because without Memorial Day, without recognizing those veterans who gave their lives for our freedoms, they wouldn't be there. So I think it's really important. To go along with that, we've had some of our students um, that after they graduate, they're going into the service. And I want to mention those people, those students that have already signed up. Please stand as I read your name. For the Air Force, Chloe Bodway, Brendan Casserly, and Ashlyn Taylor, please stand. For the Army, Zachary Cheney, Dawson Mendenhall, and Ethan Stoltz. And how about the Marines? Kobe Bartlett, Andrew Klassen, Elijah Guerin, Skylar Palmasano, and Nicholas Richardson. Thank you guys. How about all the veterans in the audience and on the stage? Please stand and be recognized for your service to our country. Thank you. Fort Zumwalt School District for many years on Veterans Day uh, has Veterans Day celebrations at every one of our 23 schools. Every one of them does something a little different. And it's a way to, re to remember our veterans as time goes on so our students never forget what they've done for us. And now before I leave the stage, guys, I, I would not, I would be remiss if I didn't say just a word about your principal, Neil Berry. This is Neil's retirement year. He is not going to be with you next year. And that's certainly a sad thing because he's done a wonderful job and has certainly identified with West High School. How many of you have met Neil Berry? Just raise your hand in the audience and have actually met Neil. Okay, well if you've met him, you don't need to hear what I'm gonna say next. But if you've never met the man, I'm gonna read the excerpt from a note that we got at the office about Neil Berry. And it, it tells you all you need to know about the man. This is from a parent in 2005. One Sunday night in March of 2005, I was flying into New York City. Sitting next to me on the plane was a rabbi from St. Louis. We struck up a conversation. At the time, I was something of an anomaly. I was a Jew living in St. Charles County. At that time, St. Charles County was very different than it is today. After all, there was a stoplight on Highway 40 at Highway K. The rabbi asked me how it was. He was asking if I had experienced any anti-Semitism. So I told him about a story that my family had experienced in the Fort Sumald School District. One year, the homecoming dance was held on a holy day on the Jewish calendar, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Our daughter, a freshman at the time, was conflicted should she go to the dance or should she go to worship? After the dance was held, my wife called the school and spoke to Principal Neil Berry and related our daughter's dilemma. Neil replied, I'm sorry, I did not know that. Neil went on to say, if you send me the holiday schedule for the next year, I will make sure it doesn't happen again. My wife sent him the holiday schedule for the next five years. And that was the last homecoming Fort Sumwald West had on a Jewish High Holy Day. Upon completing the story, the rabbi said to me, of course he did that. This is America. He is an American. That's Neil Berry. If you've never met him, I hope that tells you a little bit about him. And I appreciate him. He's been a great colleague. And he's left an impression on over 10,000 graduates that he's dealt with in 18 years with Fort Sumwald. How about a nice hand for Neil Berry? Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the ceremony.
kind of a dirty trick. I'm trying not to get emotional today, and he started me off rough here. Uh, <clears throat> I do want to take one minute to thank my staff that's here today. If you're a member of the West High staff, please stand. <clears throat> audience as well. We've got staff members in the audience. Thank you all for being so awesome, and thank you for being here today to celebrate with the class of 2021. So our first speaker this morning is Captain Jordan Duran. In the program, if you looked at it, she's listed as First Lieutenant Duran, but, uh, well, this achiever is moving faster than our printers because in May she became Captain Jordan Duran. Jordan is a member of the class of 2012. She's currently a fixed-wing Army aviator stationed in Hunter Air Force Airfield in Savannah, Georgia. After graduating from Zumwalt West, she attended the United States Military Academy at West Point and graduated with a bachelor's degree in human geography and commissioned into the active duty Army as a second lieutenant. While at the Academy, she spent much of her time on the Hudson River serving as Team Commodore as Coxswain in the Army West Point crew team. Jordan then attended flight school at Fort Rucker, Alabama, where she was selected to fly in the Army's fixed wing program. After graduating flight school, she was assigned to 224 Military Intelligence Battalion in Savannah, Georgia, where she currently serves as pilot in command, unit trainer, and assistant operations officer. Throughout her career, Jordan was deployed in three different continents to conduct aerial intelligence missions and completed multiple transatlantic ferry operations. Most notably, in 2019, she commanded her battalion's Forward Aviation Detachment out of Al-Assad Air Base in Iraq in support of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve with the, mission, with the mission to defeat ISIS in Iraq and Syria and to increase regional stability. I invited Jordan to return to West High today and share with the class of 2021. Captain Duran. Distinguished guests, faculty, friends, family, and class of 2021. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you today, but please understand, though I am in uniform, the thoughts, opinions, and ideas I will share with you today are those of my own, and do not reflect the thoughts, opinions, or ideas of any organization I represent to include the United States Army or the United States Military Academy at West Point. I am profoundly grateful to be here, and on the topic of gratitude, I'd like to take a minute to recognize the people who empowered this graduating class. To the faculty, staff, and coaches, thank you for providing the long hours of mentorship and for being inspirational role models. To the parents, guardians, grandparents, and siblings who have been cheerleaders, moral gurus, and disciplinarians, you've been hard people to impress at times, and at other times, the only people in their corners. Nonetheless, you've been the most loving people in their lives. Class of 2021, join me in a round of applause for those who have dedicated part of their lives to facilitating success in yours. I think Dr. Dubray did a beautiful job speaking about Mr. Berry but I would be remiss if I didn't share some of my thoughts as well. Mr. Neil Berry began his career in education and public service as an English teacher 32 years ago. Today, he graduates his 18th and final senior class as principal of Fort Zumwalt West. This totals the number of students that he has led and mentored to nearly 10,000 students, myself included. He has set the standard extremely high for stewarding public service and compassionate leadership. When I think about the array of leaders, to include teachers, coaches, professors, and commanders that have influenced my life and inspired my dedication to service over the years, Mr. Berry stands out among the rest. Mr. Berry, you will be missed and adored for years to come. Everyone, please join me in a round of applause for Neil Berry and his three decades of service to his community, impacting well over 10,000 lives along the way. All 
All right, class of 2021, let's dive in. What advice could I possibly offer this class? You are survivors of high school in 2020, <laughs> an experience many cannot relate to. Regardless of the countless hardships your families, this community, and the country faced in the last year, you persevered. Your class list of academic and athletic achievement is impressive. I'm excited to watch the Jaguar baseball team crush Howell today to secure their spot in the Final Four. Good luck, gentlemen. To the 12 of you enlisting into the Marines, Air Force, and Army, I applaud you for answering the call to serve, and I look forward to seeing you out in the force. You have a challenging road ahead, but you'll make the best friendships of your life, and it'll make every minute worth it. Class of 2021, you've had a hell of a year, and I can certainly acknowledge and appreciate the adversity that you've faced, but you've made it against all odds at some points, <laughs> but you've made it. Congratulations. So who am I? I suppose I'm all those things in the bio, but more importantly, today I am you, just nine years ahead. I remember the excitement of graduation and celebrating one last summer with my closest friends, but I also remember how daunting and uncertain the future seemed. I remember the pressure of feeling like at 18, I needed to know what I wanted to contribute to the world and have a plan to execute immediately upon graduation. Well. If you're feeling uncertain and overwhelmed today, I'm here to tell you that that's okay. And even better, I have a message for you from your future self. The true joy of life can only be found in the day-to-day -day living. Don't get me wrong, goal setting and career and family planning are all extremely important and necessary. But above all else, you must strive to live the most authentic life possible, a life you customize for yourself. Before I explain what I believe an authentic life is, I do feel obligated to tell you that life is a worthy opponent and that you cannot control it and you cannot hide from it. If you attempt to outrun, outwit, or wrestle life into submission, you will lose. Some of you might be like me and you've justified perfectionism by calling it ambition. Let me assure you the line between the two is thin, but life will exploit the difference. Conversely, if you sit stalemate, hiding in cowardness and comfort, life will find you and promptly throw you into the fight. Life doesn't care if you weren't done preparing for it if you, or if you were already having a bad day, month, or year. Life does not favor the idle. So if we know life can be overwhelmingly uncertain, how do we live authentically? Well, the most authentic people I know and admire all have two things in common. They are self-aware, and they have made peace with themselves in a genuine way. I have four truths I'd like to share with you that I live by to keep me focused on authentic authentically living, which are rooted in two qualities. Number one, your health is priority. If you don't make your health a priority, your short-term, long-term goals do not matter. Be self-aware enough to acknowledge you only get one mind and one body. You need to know what you are eating and why. It is an unbelievably beautiful world out there. Get outside and exercise. It will amaze you when everything seems to fall into place once you have a strong foundation of physical and mental health. If you only remember one thing from my speech, I hope it is this. Number two, make gratitude a lifestyle. We must show gratitude for the time and space we were born into. Anytime you feel entitlement in any aspect of your life, I challenge you to reevaluate your position. Look around and you'll realize at any given time you can list at least five things that you can be grateful for, regardless of what other five things you think you should have. It's pretty simple. A mindset of gratitude recalibrates your outlook on the fairness of life because you are always in a mentality of appreciation for what you do have versus focusing on what you don't. Gratitude can be a genuine equalizer among all humans, and we should strive to connect through it daily. Number three, self-acceptance calms the soul. You gotta get okay with yourself. The good, the bad, the ugly. Your face looks the way it looks, 
Your voice is what it is. The mistakes you've made are done, and your future mistakes are closer than you think. All that time you spend wishing you were two inches taller, you asked that girl out, or you didn't hurt your friend's feelings, that time is gone. You have willingly given that time up, all the while knowing you only have a finite amount of it. Be self-aware of the impacts your actions and words are having on you and the people they impact. But once you've made peace with your mistakes, move on. Mistakes provide honest pain that give you an authentic edge and make you, you. The sooner you choose to like yourself, the sooner you can choose to love yourself. And when you love yourself, life becomes much more fulfilling because you are acknowledging you as an imperfect human are worthy of living an unprecedented life. Lastly, number four, being fully present is the foundation of happiness and a fully experienced life. If you find that you are spending a lot of time doing things where you are not fully present, you need to find something that engages you more. Or maybe just you need to be more present overall. There's an unrelenting and obnoxious amount of external noise around you. Social media is not your friend when trying to be present in daily life. Step out of the noise, get some fresh air, and be engaged in each moment with the people around you. Be present in that daily grind because the hard truth is, tomorrow is promised to no one. Those are my four truths. When you make your health a priority, choose gratitude as a lifestyle, accept yourself and your humbling mistakes, and connect to the present moment, your experiences will be more meaningful and joy will find you in ways you could never imagine. Life is not and never will be perfect or predictable, but making mistakes and navigating unpredictable challenges is how you really get to know yourself in the most genuine way. Furthermore, you can find significance in both achievement and failure and not hold your identity crisis and hostage in either category. This, my friends, is an absolutely freeing way to live. Embracing the opportunity to learn about yourself every day instead of focusing on accolades, positions, or your salary. Hopefully this advice offers some peace of mind for the uncertainty of at least the next decade. I got nothing for you after that. <laughs> you were watching me navigate that in real time. Class of 2021, I wish you good health, achievements, failures, honest joy, and honest pain. But most of all, I hope you have the courage to really get to know yourself and make the freeing decision to live your most authentic life. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Duran. Jordan, because of your outstanding leadership while representing West High after graduation, we are presenting you today with the first ever Alumni Leadership Citizenship Award. get to do that. <clears throat> so you've probably noticed we have a white balloon tied to a chair here today among our graduates. This is marking the chair where Levin Brown would have sat today. Levin uh, was a member of the class of 21 who passed away last year. I would like to take a, a moment of silence in honor of Levin Brown. Thank you. Senior class sponsors, Mrs. Abby Hall, Mrs. Sharon Dugan, please come to the stage now. They will assist me in recognizing the class of 2021 Citizenship and Leadership Award recipients. These award winners were selected by a vote of our faculty, and they will receive an engraved Jaguar statue. The first award we're presenting today is for citizenship. 
This award is presented to Miss Emma Catherine Koenig. Come on up here, Emma. On this side. I'm not sure. Emma is the daughter of David Koenig. She will be attending Lindenwood University where she will study education, specializing in special education. Interesting note about Emma, we give uh, Essence of PPI awards away. Uh, faculty members nominate a student who they believe deserves recognition. Rarely, very rarely, does anyone get the award more than once. There's 2,000 students in our school. Emma has received this award four times. Every year, a faculty member has selected her as demonstrating the essence of PPI. Congratulations, Emma. Our second award is presented for leadership and loyalty. This award is presented to Ella Abigail Brown. Ella is the daughter of Douglas and Joe Beth Brown. She will be attending the University of Alabama where she will major in psychology with a neuroscience minor. Ella was selected to speak to her class, so she's going to remain on stage and address the class of 2021. The year was 2017. Masks were for doctors. College was a lifetime away, and our mom still drove us everywhere. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle had just become engaged. Kendall Jenner and Pepsi ended racism, and Humble by Kendrick Lamar was at the top of all of our playlists. We were bright-eyed freshmen with four years of growth ahead of us. The boys were about a foot shorter back then, and the ladies were still figuring out the importance of matching your foundation to your skin tone. There were many things on our mind during freshman year. Finally getting our permit, passing Ms. Frazier's English class, and praying that the seniors didn't yell at us in the, senior, in the student section. Sophomore year brought driver's licenses, our first AP classes, and unwarranted disgust for the freshmen we were, but only three months before. Driving was a form of freedom that we had never experienced, and it inflated our egos, but we were quickly humbled by the long walk from the pool parking lot during the winter. Junior year consisted of a long, painful death caused either by biology, chemistry, or physics. I have no further comments on the torture that was junior year, but thank goodness we never had to take a final. And at last, emerging from the ashes of quarantine, our senior year came. It did not look like what we thought it would, but we still have plenty of wonderful memories to take with us. This past week has been crazy busy for me, so if you all don't mind, I'd like to take a page out of Jimmy Fallon's book and write a couple thank you notes today. Thank you, high school, for teaching me that fitting in should not be the goal. Whether I cite those god-awful Aztec leggings from middle school or doing photo shoots in the Von Mar parking garage, we all understand the importance of individuality. It took me a long time to see that being different was a good thing. For example, Brady's killer dance moves. <laughs> Allie's remarkably intelligent mind, or Julia's insanely strong arms. No one else is like you, so do not try to be like anyone else. Thank you, high school for showing me that you don't need to do it all. Many of us spent our time going to school, attending a club, practicing for a sport, 
working a part-time job, and then doing homework every single night. At the end of the day, we were drained. But instead of overworking ourselves to the brink of exhaustion, we should be doing the things that give us energy. Join the club that exemplifies your deepest passions and quit the sport you loathe. Volunteer somewhere related to your future career path and quit the part-time job that only brings you misery. It is important to our own well-being that we choose to do what makes us happy. Thank you, high school, for teaching me that you are defined by how you treat others. In an environment where being jocks, band geeks, and popular kids can separate us, we have all managed to learn that our sport, our skin, our clothes, our gender, and our grades do not define us. Our ability to feel for others, to serve our community, and to work for the good of humanity is where our true identities lie. And finally, thank you, high school, for teaching me resilience in the face of adversity. A golf cart crash my sophomore year was the first time I had truly stumbled upon a mountain to climb. And for everyone sitting before me today, you had a mountain of your own. Some event in your high school career that transformed you from a kid to an adult. In contrast to that, we all faced one adversity together, COVID-19. The class of 2021 suffered under the hands of an invisible, tiny oppressor. It took away normal. Football games, classes, senior events, these all looked different this year. And although we can be thankful for our health now, it's okay to grieve what we have lost. Senior year is notorious for fun and ease. We, instead, leave high school hardened by the difficulties we faced. Thank you, Fort Zumont West, for allowing us to change, because we are most certainly not the same freshmen that walked into those doors four long years ago. Use the strength, wisdom, and kindness you've developed to do good in the world. As we leave here today, not as high school students, but as adults entering a world made for our taking, I encourage you to thank those that have made you into the person you are today. Thank your family, your friends, your elementary school bully, Alicia Shane, thank you. <laughs> your teachers, anyone and everyone who has helped you grow along the way. I'd now like to recognize a few special employees retiring this year who are honorary members of the class of 2021. Please stand when I say your name, and audience, you guys can clap when I'm finished. Ms. Dugan. Mrs. Baker. Ms. Fitzgerald. Mr. Frazier, Mrs. Hahn, Mrs. Hastings, Mr. Hayden, Mr. Hayes, Mrs. Herman, Mrs. Hull, Mrs. Moore, Mrs. Russell, Ms. Seeker, Mr. Twitchell, and finally, Mr. Berry. Thank you all for your commitment to the Fort Zumwalt West community. You will most certainly be missed next year. Before we go, I have one final thank you note. Thank you to the class of 2021 for the good times. Thank you to the solitaire staff, dance coaches, and Mr. Jaguar boys who endured hours of rehearsals to put on a fabulous show. Thank you to the football team for taking the school to the semifinals in 2019 and allowing us to feel school spirit in its entirety. Thank you to the coaches and players for bringing home not one, but two Powderpuff wins. Thank you to the baseball team for winning a district championship after a record-setting season, showing us that teamwork is the most important ingredient for winning. Thank you to my fellow senior class officers for doing your best to make senior events fun despite many, many obstacles. And thank you to every single person before me for your kindness, your hard work, and the lessons you have taught me. The class of 2021 exemplifies resilience. Like a phoenix from the ashes, we rise.
And now your 2021 senior class president, Bradley William Wincher, will be delivering the senior gift. Thank you. Thank you for that welcome, Ella. And I have a few thank yous, not only a thank you, but a an apology to Mr. Barry for pushing him into retirement. <laughs> and thank you to the senior officers around me, Mrs. Hall and Mrs. Dugan again, to present the senior gift this year. This year we decided to put a giant arc metal banner thing over the scoreboard that'll read jag Jaguars with two Jaguar heads on each side to uh, add some spice to our scoreboard. And I can't leave without the super fan in me recognizing our baseball team who are playing for quarterfinals today. They have the best record in school history. They went 30 and four in the regular season and are 33 and four after winning district championships last weekend. They play in the state quarterfinals today. Get your tickets at mission.org. Also, thank you to Brady for being my hype man. Love your dancing, dude. Keeps me going, we love it. And uh, if I were to leave you here with one last thing to say, it would be to follow WAO underscore Wiffle on Instagram. It's a great page, check it out. Thank you guys, it's been a great year. It's been an honor being your president, thank you. Thank you, Brad and Ella. In a normal year, this is the time of the program where I would tell you about this class's greatness. I would share with you that Arya Shah was selected as one of Missouri's top 100 scholars and has received a National Merit Scholarship for Texas A&M. Hannah Rowland also received a National Merit Scholarship. Allison Mers was recognized for her excellence in the areas of science, technology, engineering, and math, and she is the first student in our school's history to graduate with a grade point average above a 4.8. I'd like to share with you that our Winter Guard placed second in the state and our dancers brought home three national trophies from Orlando this year. And yet again, our yearbook has received national recognition. You can clap for yearbook, it's wonderful. I'd like to tell you that Alex Herman and Julia Crenshaw were both first team all state selections, Alex in soccer and Julia in softball. And speaking of Julia Crenshaw, she just happens to be the newest state champion in our school's history as on Thursday, she brought home the state title in the Javelin. Congratulations to her. We also had all state honors in track and field at the meet on Thursday from Jaden Quadio and Lauren Hoffman. Congratulations to them. Three other members of this class were part of our 4x800 relay team that competed on Thursday. You know, my theme for my speech today was perseverance and overcoming obstacles, and their state experience is an excellent example of this. Because of the rain delay and in an attempt to get the meet finished more quickly, all 16 teams ran at the same time. This created a tremendous amount of congestion, especially at the first handoff, and our runner fell down was tripped. When he regained his feet, we were in 15th place out of 16. When they crossed the finish line, they had battled back to receive an all-state seventh place medal, and the seniors on that team were Anderson Lowe, Nick Parker, and Bennett Boatman. Congratulations to them. This class celebrated team conference championships in softball and women's cross country and district titles in softball, men's tennis, and also in men's tennis, we had an all-state performer in Bryce Boatman. You've heard a lot about our other district title, baseball, three o'clock today. I'll be there, boys. I'm probably most proud to tell you that when US News and World Report 
released their rankings of schools in Missouri. There are 603 public schools in the state of Missouri. We were number 11 and number one in St. Charles County. I could tell you a lot more about this class, but this is my last graduation, as you've heard a couple of times, and I want to teach one more lesson. So class of 2021, you have been called resilient. You've persevered. You're a group that has survived a worldwide pandemic. But there are individual members of the class of 2021 here today that have been presented with obstacles that many of us cannot imagine. Those who have made no excuses and asked for nothing and succeeded quietly behind the scenes. I want to show you what real resiliency looks like. I want you to put a face to perseverance. I want you all to celebrate here this morning with me the success of your classmates who have overcome some tremendous challenges. My first example starts in February of 2019 when your classmate Maggie Edmondson had hip surgery. You see, following the surgery, she began to experience numbness and tingling in her legs and feet. Her doctors ordered an MRI, which revealed a tumor pressing on her spinal cord. This tumor had to be removed, so surgery was scheduled for June 26th of 2019. The surgery successfully removed the tumor, and thankfully that tumor was benign, so cancer wasn't an issue. However, Maggie woke from that surgery with a terrible headache. As we sit here today, 23 months later, Maggie still has that headache. Not a day goes by that she does not experience a headache. And some days she has neck and back pain in addition. Doctors have tried multiple spinal patches, but have not been successful in eliminating her pain. Maggie's story was brought to my attention just recently because in April, she was accepted into an intense three-week program to learn how to fully function in school and life despite being in chronic pain. The program is meant to empower young people in this situation and to allow them to regain functionality and improve their quality of life. Maggie's been given obstacles that many of us would use as an excuse to avoid work. No one would blame her if she opted out of coming to school and elected home instruction. How can we expect her to take tests and complete assignments when the light causes her headaches to worsen? But Maggie never gave an excuse. She never asked for an exemption. She never asked for a waiver. When I called her down to talk to her about this speech, all she wanted to tell me was how much she appreciated her teachers and how everyone was so helpful. Maggie Edmondson, you are an example for all of us. You wake up every morning in pain and you go to bed every night with pain. You have a built-in excuse that you refuse to use and all of this, and for all of this, I want you to stand up, Maggie, and be recognized. Thank you, Maggie, for your wonderful story of perseverance and happy birthday. For my second example, I want to go back to October 11th of 2019. That night, our football team traveled to Holt High School to play the undefeated Indians. I was really amazed as the Jags completely dominated the game and it seemed that nearly every time Holt's running back touched the ball, he was immediately tackled by number 52, Nick Matico. Our football team went on to a Final Four finish and set a school record for wins that season, and Nick had great expectations for his senior season. But June 29th, 2020, that all changed. Nick was a passenger in a car that was traveling nearly 100 miles per hour when the driver lost control, and the car rolled six times. He was airlifted to the hospital. While in the, ho while in the helicopter, Nick had a seizure. He was in a coma for five days as his brain continued to swell. In an instant, everything had changed for Nick. His senior year was no longer about football and scholarships, but rather it was just about living. 
Nick lost permanent function in the frontal right cortex of his brain. Rather than lifting weights and running sprints, Nick spent July and August in rehabilitation trying to regain the ability to do normal life functions that we all take for granted. Sports were no longer an option for Nick, and attending school, well, that wasn't a reality either. I'm thrilled to tell you all that Nick is here with us this morning. He attended school virtually, earning his diploma. Nick, please stand. When I brought Nick in to discuss his journey, he asked me to make sure and tell his classmates two things. Number one, make good choices when it comes to who you ride with. And number two, always wear your seatbelt. Nick says he might possibly have had a normal senior year if he'd have worn a seatbelt. Lessons from Nick. For my final example of overcoming insurmountable odds, I'm turning back the clock a long ways. I'm going to go back to 2005. On Thursday, January 13th, 2005, Dr. Henry St. Pierre and I were supervising a home basketball game. After the game was over, O'Fallon police officer and current school board member, Mike Cummins, entered the gym and told me that some of my students had been involved in a serious car accident. And it looked like one of them wasn't going to make it. Her name was Marcia Maines. I was in my second year as a principal at West. I had not encountered any tragedies, and so many emotions ran through my mind. First and foremost is, who is Marcia Maines? Went to my office and I looked her up. On the computer screen was the description of a perfect student. Three semesters of high school, straight A's. No absences, not even a tardy. She was involved in sports, running cross country and swimming. And guilt really flooded me as I could not for the life of me place who this girl was. How could the perfect student attend my school and I have no idea who she is? And now, according to Officer Cummings, I might never meet her. I vowed that night to figure out a way to at least meet everyone. That was the first impact that Marsha had on my life and my career. That was also the birth of the Berry Birthday Basket. Many of you have selected items from that. So Marsha was deemed unresponsive on the side of Highway 364. She was airlifted to St. John's Mercy Hospital, and when her parents arrived, the doctor met them and told them that she had seven fractures to her pelvis, a crushed left hip, right frontal contusion of the brain, left back contusion of the brain, internal bleeding in the abdomen. Marcia was placed on life support and the doctor said if she survives the next 24 hours, we will begin to address her injuries. The next day, Friday the 14th, Marcia spiked a fever of 104 and developed pneumonia. The following day, a brain stem injury was confirmed. So on Monday, the neurologist examined Marcia and told her parents that due to her lack of progress, they needed to start researching institutions or homes that could adequately take care of Marcia's needs because he feared that they would take their daughter home from the hospital in a vegetative state. Then came Wednesday. The ICU floor doctor came rushing out of Marsha's room, <clears throat> rather panicked. Mark and Amy Maines, Marsha's parents, thought that the worst must have happened and Marsha must have passed. But when they entered her room, they saw she was still asleep, she was still in a coma, but in her left hand were all of the tubes that had been forced down her throat that was helping her to breathe. She had pulled them out and she was breathing on her own. Dr. Sample told her parents that it was too early to know if Marcia would fully recover, but he suspected she would continue to improve. We'll revisit Dr. Sample later. Over the next couple of days, I made my second or third trip down to the hospital in an attempt to officially meet Marcia. I will always remember that meeting because I didn't know if it would happen. 
I took her hand and I told her it was nice to meet her. And she smiled back and wrote me a message. It's nice to meet you too, Mr. Barry. And my heart melted because she knew me. Marcia knew who I was. Over the next couple of days, Marcia continued to improve. And then on February 5th, Marcia returned to school. Let me tell you that again. She returned to West High School 12 days after waking from a coma, 23 days after lying unresponsive on the side of Highway 364. Marcia came back to school. Yeah. So I got a little choked up and I skipped a paragraph I wanted to share with you. When Marcia first woke up, she couldn't speak, obviously. Her father handed her a whiteboard and she wrote three letters. She wrote, wow. <laughs> That's Marcia. So this straight A student, she returned to her honors schedule without the ability to read or do simple math. She was in a wheelchair and she was so very weak. She started attending on Tuesdays and Thursdays and she only went for half a day. And as each week passed, she became stronger and she stayed longer. I wanted her back in school as soon as possible, but I was planning for her to audit her classes. She had plenty of time to make up credits and graduate with her class, so it seemed right to allow her to heal while attending classes and not assigning grades. I wanted to wait and make sure that Marcia was really going to recover. I wanted to know that cognitively she would be back. Marcia would not accept that. It didn't matter that she was enrolled in our advanced track courses, and as a sophomore, she was taking chemistry and algebra two and still learning to read and add all over again. She refused to accept a pass. She wanted no special treatment. Marcia attended rehab at the Head Injury Resource Center Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and worked with her homebound instructor, West High chemistry teacher, Becky Maltman, and her mother, Amy Maines, a teacher at Twin Chimneys Elementary every night. Her ability to read was corrected within a few weeks when her double vision went away. But math, that was a bigger challenge. It took four or five weeks of rigorous effort for her to regain her math skills. When it came time for end of course exams, which we called MAT tests in 2005, I exempted Marcia. Yeah, that didn't go. Once again, Marcia, who one might consider stubborn, refused. She said she was going to take the tests. Even though she wasn't able to be in school all day and some of the assessments take hours, she was taking the tests. I questioned if she had the stamina. She assured me she would be fine. She took the test. So her sophomore year finished. She had all A's, but I suspected that might have been the result of her great homebound instructor, her mother's tireless efforts, and the grace of our teaching staff. I still had no idea what Marcia was capable of, of achieving, but that all changed when the MAP scores came back that summer. Dr. Sutton came in my office and asked me if I had reviewed the results. It was summer, so the answer was no. She smiled from ear to ear and said, well, you might wanna check the list of students who earned a five in English. Five is the highest score that you could earn. And the English language arts list was a very short list. And one name jumped off that page, Marsha Maines. I cried. This wonderful little fragile girl had now taught me another lesson and I barely even knew her. She now taught me to never doubt. Don't doubt what a determined and driven young person is capable of achieving. Marcia decided she wanted to be a doctor after she returned to the ICU at St. John's and met some of the doctors who had helped her. She didn't have much of a memory of them, and she was surprised when Dr. Sample, I told you I would come back to him in a little bit, he cried. He cried because he was overwhelmed by emotion upon seeing Marcia walk with her one crutch. She refused to stay in a wheelchair very long. Into the ICU just a few months after having been brought there unresponsive. Tears of joy are kind of a, a common occurrence when you get to know Marcia and her story. 
Marsha went on to graduate from West High with honors in 2007. She enrolled in the University of Missouri in Columbia, studying pre-med. She graduated from there in 2011 without ever making anything but an A. And then she applied and was accepted into Mizzou's medical school. It was here that she made her first B, and in her words, it almost killed me. Kind of ironic. <laughs> While in medical school, Marcia had to learn to advocate for herself. She had to ask for help. Another lesson that we might learn from Marcia. She also explained to me that whenever she received her schedule, she not only blocked out her class times, but she also blocked out all of her professor's office hours and made it a point to go to every professor's office hour every time they had one. A good lesson for you going to college. Get to know your professors. It was during one of those office hour meetings that she discussed her medical history with one of her professors. He asked if he might review her medical records more closely. The next time she came in to meet with him during office hours, he said, what are you doing? You have no business trying to be a doctor. Why are you putting yourself through all of this? With the brain damage that you've sustained, you will never get past the MCAT. Another doubter. Marcia finished medical school with her 1B, and then she sat for the MCAT. There are no accommodations given on the MCAT, so you either get a qualifying score or you don't. Talk about a high stakes test. After eight years of college, you take one test. Well, needless to say, despite her professor's prediction of failure, Marcia scored high enough that the University of Tennessee matched her for a medical residency in a four-year obstetrics program. Marcia soon found that she loved delivering babies, but when it came time for surgery, she became very anxious. This was a lingering side effect of her brain injury. She was able to get through, in her words, but her anxiety became such a problem for her that she decided she didn't want to risk her patient's safety and she stepped out of obstetrics after three years. This created another huge obstacle. She was just one year from finishing, and she decided to switch fields. There was no guarantee that she'd be matched with another area of study, and the three years she just completed, they wouldn't count toward another doctorate. You start over. So take a minute and digest that. Three years of your life, three years of 24-hour hospital shifts, Three years of hard work, and you give it all up for the potential safety of people whom you've never even met. A huge lesson here in putting others before yourself. That's my Marsha. In June of 2018, Marsha was matched again, this time in family medicine, and she was able to remain at the University of Tennessee. I wanted to share with you Marsha's story of perseverance and overcoming because she is someone who sat right where you are today. She's a story of victory and success. She was doubted and told that she couldn't numerous times, but she did. And now, 14 years of education and residency later, Marsha will graduate as a member of the class of 2021 from the University of Tennessee on June 30th. I am so very proud to introduce to you West High Class of 2020 and families the newest assistant professor at the University of Missouri Medical School and staff doctor at University Hospital in the Department of Family and Community Medicine, Dr. Marsha Maines McHugh. Marsha made me a better principal. She made me a better person. I love her for that. I'm so happy to have her here today to celebrate with us. And I asked Dr. St. Pierre to present her with the second Alumni Leadership and Citizenship, Citizenship Award this morning to Dr. Marsha Maines McHugh.
I didn't know if I was going to get through that one. That was good. Marsha didn't want to speak. She's stubborn. She said no. All right. So that leaves us to the business at hand. Board of Education members, will you prepare to present diplomas to the class of 2021? These students have met the grade credit requirements of the Fort Zumwalt Board of Education and the state of Missouri. Students, you should now prepare to receive your West High Diploma with all the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities that come with this high school diploma. Connor James Ackenhausen. Gwyneth Shea Agler. Giovanni Aguirre. Ryan Michael Alagna. <laughs> Malena Lynn Almengor, summa cum laude. <laughs> Dylan Faye Amos. Benjamin Mac Anderson. Connor Michael Anderson. Ian David Anderson. Jacob Thomas Anderson. Sydney Ellen Anderson, cum laude. Caitlin Michelle Apple. William Ryan Stafford. Lauren Ray Arend. Summa cum laude. Emily Elizabeth Aspley. Alex Edward I. Cum laude. Nicholas Chase Azar. Jericho Slimmon Badwan. Moritz Baika. Gavin Jackson Ball. Jack David Barnes, summa cum laude. Blake Allen Barnett. Kobe Matthew Bartlett. Ella Grace Bassman, magna cum laude. Mm -hmm. 
James Michael Anderson, cum laude. Nathan William Bauer. Taryn Daniel Bays. Jody Maluko Bazera. Jaden Tyshell Beasley. Abigail Nicole Beavers, summa cum laude. Grace Taylor Bison. Ethan Thomas Belding. Maxton Michael Bender. Abigail Rose Hillian. Samantha Ann Helton. Daryl Ozeal Blanks Chavez. Haley Elizabeth Blake. Bennett Drew Boatman, summa cum laude. Bryce Philip Boatman, summa cum laude. Chloe Christine Bodway, summa cum laude. Aya Simone Body. Trented Jacob Bone. Taylor Lynn Bonzani. Alan Linnell Borelli. Samantha Nicole Bolin. Caitlin Rosemary Boyd, summa cum laude. Emily Dominique Bradford. Mariella Jane Bradensteiner, cum laude. Lucas Aaron Bright, magna cum laude. Matthew Joseph Brody. Bethany Grace Brosey, cum laude. Ella Abigail Brown, summa cum laude. Leah Jean Brown, summa cum laude. Lucas Xander Brown, summa cum laude.
Vincent Edward Buckholtz. Harrison Joseph Burke. Tyler Alexandria Bowie. Catherine Jo Buys. Thomas Daniel Buys. Mason Christopher Burness. Eric Matthew Busby. Peyton, excuse me, Peyton Kathleen Butler. Evan Zachary Berth. Autumn Nicole Calhoun. Reese Christian Kalia, summa cum laude. Carter Michael Cameron, magna cum laude. Haley Campbell. Austin James Reed Carranza. Riley Elizabeth Carter. Carissa Storm Carver. Brendan Michael Casserly. Jackson Hayden Cecil, magna cum laude. Gabriella Sue Chahon. Harmon Singh Chohan, summa cum laude. Daniel Stephen Chedester. Vivian Ashton Childs. Andrew Philip Klassen, cum laude. Raina Nicole Klassen, summa cum laude. Rhett Joseph Clausen Jr., summa cum laude. Cannon Luron Clouch. Omari Mikkel Cobb. Tyler Alexander Coleman, magna cum laude. Zachary Ross Connor. Grace Elizabeth Cooper, summa cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Coots.
Aiden James Copeland, magna cum laude. Ella Faye Cordsimmon. Tyler Joseph Corey. Sierra Danielle Creek, magna cum laude. Julia Marie Crenshaw, magna cum laude. Emma Grace Curran, magna cum laude. Noah Michael Dagley. Jackson Gabriel David. Braden Anthony Davis. Carson Scott Davis, summa cum laude. Ivy Gia Dean. Cameron Michael Dietz, summa cum laude. Diana Marguerite Demerchian. Lacey Marie DePriest. Brooklyn Grace DeShirley, summa cum laude. Laura Ann Dickinson, summa cum laude. Alexandria Marie Diefenbach, summa cum laude. Jacob David Deal, summa cum laude. Cecilia Faith De Mercurio, summa cum laude. Jacob Stephen Dobbs. Cherith Dapalapudi, cum laude. Abby Rose Doria, summa cum laude. David McClendon Douglas III, summa cum laude. Logan Thomas Driscoll. Daniel Thomas Dubowski. Olivia Yvonne Duvalius. Samantha Elise Dyrex, summa cum laude. Andrew Patrick Eco. Zachary Allen Edler. Maggie Kathleen Edmondson, cum laude.
Kelly Elizabeth Eisenhofer. Megan Elaine Alum. Marne Lanea Ellis, cum laude. Angelina Sofia Enriquez. Ryan Christopher Evans. Silas Mitchell Everding. Emma Grace Fadine. Connor Lee Falls. Ivana Phoebus. Carl Douglas Finstemacher, the third, cum laude. Paige Michelle Fisher. Paige Marie Fitton, magna cum laude. Brian Stanley Flores Henriquez. Mia Alexandria Faith Fuhr. John Patrick Gaffney. Adrian Lucas Gage. Caleb Joseph Garavaglia. Cole Michael Garrett. Maisie Ray Garrison, cum laude. Elijah Thomas Guerin. Tatum Marie Gerwitz, magna cum laude. Jacob Steven Girardi. Noel Grace Glaman, summa cum laude. Cameron Lee Glenn, cum laude. Joshua Michael Golden. Catherine Ann Goltz, cum laude. Emma Jane Gordon. Hannah Renee Goff, summa cum laude.
Brett Valentine Grasick, summa cum laude. Gregory Vincent Graham, cum laude. Mia Jade Grant. Trenton Allen Green. Cassandra Hope Greenberg. Riley Jean Gregerson. Caleb Nolan Griner, summa cum laude. Hunter Cole Purcells, magna cum laude. Timothy Michael Guccione, summa cum laude. Hannah Rose Gumper, magna cum laude. Noah James Hargraves. Kathleen Arian Harris, summa cum laude. Kristen Page Hartbeck. Kelly Elizabeth Hartnagel, cum laude. Abigail Rose Hatfield, magna cum laude. Adam Joseph Hawkins, magna cum laude. Annalise Marie Heisman. Nicholas McKinnon Miles Helsel. Lauren Elizabeth Herbst, summa cum laude. Nicholas Isaiah Herbst, summa cum laude. Efren Heredia Jr. Alexander James Herman. Caitlin Page Hurtling, magna cum laude. David Paul Hickman III. Abigail Page Hicks. Michael James Higuchi, magna cum laude. Kathleen Cecilia Hilke, summa cum laude. Lauren Elizabeth Hoffman, summa cum laude.
Braden Kenneth Hoisington, summa cum laude. Kristen Marie Holzen. Tyan Allen Hotmer, summa cum laude. Tyler Harrison Houchen, magna cum laude. Mitchell Davis Huber. Neil Ryan Huck. Mark James Huffendick. Zachary David Yeager. Ashley Michelle Jameson. Nathaniel Sean Jaworski, magna cum laude. Addison Summer Jett, summa cum laude. Aaron Mark Jewett, magna cum laude. Judge Spencer Jukes. Luis David Chica Jimenez. Landon Joseph Johns. Cody Paul Johnson. Matthew James Johnson. Samantha Gail Johnson. Shaley Malia Johnson, summa cum laude. Tyler James Johnson. Ella Grace Johnstone. Alex Taylor Jones. Ariane Melissa Jones. Nicholas Taylor Jones. Olivia Marie Kalleberg, summa cum laude. Tyler Joseph Kaminsky, summa cum laude. Joshua Mark Kaplan. Brianna Marie Keck, cum laude. Colin David Keel. Colton Michael Kellerman.
Christopher Justin Kerr Blackhall, magna cum laude. Jirapriya Kiyadamanpat. Caleb Brooks Kickham. Griffin Patrick Kipper, summa cum laude. Calvin Patrick Kirchhoff. Abigail Ruth Kirubakarin. Ethan Christopher Niemiller. Emma Catherine Koenig, cum laude. Julia Marie Kaufman, summa cum laude. Isabella Marie Cordy, cum laude. Jaden Darius Quadio, summa cum laude. Autumn Grace Kruckeberg. Mary Margaret Cruz, magna cum laude. Dariana Renee Keener, cum laude. Derek Allen Kuhlman. Cheyenne Bailey Landrum. Trevor Lawrence Laughlin. Lydia Marie Limbeck, summa cum laude. Ethan Riley Limberger. Hayden Lawrence Limberger. Nathan Anthony Leger. Anderson Lowe, summa cum laude. Peyton Alexander Lopes. Drew Lunk. Parker James Madrid. Subi Abdallah Manasra. William Andrew Manning, magna cum laude. Alan B. Joy Matthew. Woo. 
Clayton John Matre. Cole Christopher Matthews. Nicholas James Matico. William Dialo Maurer. Lauren Elizabeth Maynard, magna cum laude. McKenna Grace McCarthy, summa cum laude. Sean Allen McConnell. Jacob Thomas McEntee. Genevieve Ann McIntyre, magna cum laude. Kendall Reed McIntyre. Cooper Michael McKernan. Owen Timothy McNamee. Xavier Vegas McRoberts. Dawson Richard Mendenhall. Allison Marie Mers, summa cum laude. Joseph Ryan Muse. Curtis Patrick Meyer Peter, summa cum laude. Jarrett Dylan Myers. Andrew Philip Mitchard. Ryan Stephen Maluski, summa cum laude. Rafael Alfredo Mulongi, summa cum laude. Nolan James Miller, summa cum laude. Talise LaKayla Miller. Snehal Mishra. Eric Stephen Mitchell. Jacob Isaiah Mitchell. Samuel John Modica. Amy Nicole Mormon, summa cum laude. Landon Fjord Molstad. Morgan Michael Monia. Riley Margaret Mooney, summa cum laude.
Olivia Amanda Moore. Quincy Reginald Moore, cum laude. Maria Elena Mora, summa cum laude. Mara Lelani Morales Perez. Riley Elizabeth Moreland. Joseph Anthony Mormino. Reuben Thomas Morrison, summa cum laude. Marie Nicole Maschetti, summa cum laude. Elise Marie Mullet Shoup. Amber Lynn Murphy. Ashley Nicole Nail, cum laude. Kendall Virginia Nerney, magna cum laude. Ashlyn Arum Nichols, summa cum laude. Caitlin Daone Nichols, summa cum laude. Mattia Wellington Nunziante. Riley Todd O'Neill, cum laude. Ethan Christopher Odin. Kira Elizabeth Oliver. Kylie Nicole Orban, magna cum laude. Hattie Jean Armsby. Elizabeth Ann Ostrom, magna cum laude. Skylar Dylan Pomisano. Kohler Christopher Palmer. Vanessa Palmero, summa cum laude. Tyler Joseph Palasak. Christopher Adam Panhorst. Jack Wilson Parker.
Nicholas John Parker, magna cum laude. Reagan Emily Parker, cum laude. Buffy Ann Genevieve Parrish. Claire Alexis Pat, cum laude. Patrick Tanner Perry. Lara Corinne Pester, summa cum laude. Macy Nicole Peters. Alan Fan, summa cum laude. Evan Liam Fungsutan. Ariana Nicole Philippi. Asa Xavier Pickett, cum laude. Julian Pintor Avalos. Giacomo John Pizzo. Julia Madison Pohl. Jackson Scott Pullman, magna cum laude. Karagat <clears throat> Anita Polite. Gabrielle Artis Ponti. Dawson Reed Porter, summa cum laude. Eve Marie Porter. Madeline Ainsley Powell. Summa cum laude. Natalie Jewel Powers, cum laude. Matthew Christian Price. Brooke Grace Pridemore, summa cum laude. Braden Brown Purcell, summa cum laude. Hunter Don Quinn, cum laude. Jackson Alexander Quinn. Danielle Marie Raguski. Kayla Simone Rainey. Isaiah David Rammel. Connor James Ramsey. Hannah Grace Raymer, summa cum laude.
Maria Gabriella Reed. Alexis Marie Reese, summa cum laude. Charlotte Louise Reichensberger, summa cum laude. Derek Joseph Reynolds, magna cum laude. Naya Renee Rice, cum laude. Alexis Nicole Richard. Jonathan Graham Richard. Emma Grace Rigdon. Mackenzie Joe Riggle. Aiden Christopher Riley. Ryan Michael Robertson, cum laude. <laughs> Natalie Elaine Rodabau, summa cum laude. <laughs> Tanya Maricela Rodriguez Ramirez. Noemi Romero Viejo, summa cum laude. Jenna Alexis Roder. <laughs> Hannah Nicole Roland, summa cum laude. Madison Michelle Rue, cum laude. Yadali Guadalupe Roles Samora. Nathan Joseph Ruman. Elijah Rom Rutherford. Peter Johan Sandvig. Cameron Javon Scales. Maxwell James Scanlon, summa cum laude. Luke Raymond Schaff. Olivia Claire Shemansky, summa cum laude. Trevor Michael Schilling. Kaylee Rose Schneiders, summa cum laude. Robert Dean Schultz. Kathleen Laura Jane Seafred, cum laude. Emily Jordan Sensini, summa cum laude. Yeah. 
Lauren Marie Sawyer, cum laude. Arya Chirag Shaw, summa cum laude. Alicia Danielle Shane, summa cum laude. Macy Renee Shields. Christopher Jacob Schimmel, summa cum laude. Paige Elizabeth Shoemaker, summa cum laude. Ashlyn Ray Schultz. Jordan McKenzie Sides. Tara Rose Cifuentes. Deidre Elizabeth Sinke, summa cum laude. Brooke Alyssa Smith. Emma Christine Smith, cum laude. Rebecca Raffaele Schnihota, cum laude. Julia Kate Spaulding, summa cum laude. Blair Harrison Spees, magna cum laude. Benjamin Russell Stamps. Jackson Bristol Stanley, cum laude. Nathan Armani Staples. Gavin Nicholas Stark. Ryan Michael Stevens. Riley Ann Steffen, cum laude. Malaya Gordora Stevens. Abigail Lynn Stern, summa cum laude. Kevin Douglas Stevens. Grace Harrison Stalker, magna cum laude. Luke Matthew Strassner. Quentin Benjamin Strunk. Ethan Robert Stools. Carson William Sulzner. Yeah. 
Alyssa Faith Sutherland, summa cum laude. Rachel Marie Swink, magna cum laude. Jackson Scott Tolliver. Ashlyn Nicole Taylor. Hallie Elizabeth Taylor. Nicoletta Michelle Taylor, cum laude. Ebony Catrill Thomas. Trinity Ritaka Thomas. Edward Fletcher Thornton. Catherine Lee Thurman. Emily Amber Tichich, summa cum laude. Kylie Lynn Todebush. Brandon Michael Tolbert. Cameron Riley Toth, summa cum laude. Morgan Lynette Tracy, magna cum laude. Ang Ting Tron. Casey Tran. Grant Calvin Tribley, cum laude. Tyler Philip Trotta. Camden Charles Trudeau. Sarah Marie Trube. Jacob Russell Turner, cum laude. William Lawrence Turner. Isabel Noel Udis. Victoria Elizabeth Valenti. Shelby Cecilia Darnell Vaughn. Connor Joseph Verstraight. Alexa Lauren Wade, magna cum laude. Vedisha Bakarao Walajabad, magna cum laude. Christopher Daniel Walterscheid, magna cum laude. Chevy Paul Ward. Brianna Ami Warren. Liam Montgomery Webb, cum laude. Elijah Ross Weathy.
Tanner Matthew Weiss. Madison Sierra Wydert, summa cum laude. Kaylee Marie White. Reese Jordan White, summa cum laude. Mason Michael Whiteside, summa cum laude. Sophie Ann White, summa cum laude. Christian David Joseph Wickham. Devin Antonio Wilkins. Thank you. Emma Elizabeth Wilkins, summa cum laude. Sarah Ann Elizabeth Wilhite, summa cum laude. Jackson Thomas Williams. Parker Todd Wilson. Bradley William Wincher. Nathan Michael Wishmeyer, magna cum laude. Curtis Charles Witt, summa cum laude. Allison Lynn Whitman, summa cum laude. Kyle Christopher Wood. Christopher Joseph Walker Woodard. Alyssa Lynn Worthen. Aubrey Renee Wolfert, cum laude. Katie Ann Worm. Jasmine Renee Wyatt. Hamza Foed Zahir. Logan Joseph Zavertnik. Carter Ali Zingle. We've got a few pictures being taken over here to the side, so we have to wait a minute. You've been here two hours and 20 minutes now. What's another minute? How about a special round of applause for Karen LaFors and Jennifer Hall for reading all those names?
And I'll tell you, this is my 18th graduation. I've never had a, a group of graduates that have had to walk all the way across the stage and behave themselves so well. Thank you, graduates. You guys were great. That meant a lot to me. I appreciate that. We have two more pictures, and then we're going to throw our hats and go home. All right? You're welcome. Thank you. I'm proud I got to share my last graduation with you all. Great class. You guys were a lot of fun. So, I've got to turn to my last page. Let me extend my personal congratulations to the class of 2021. Would the class of 2021 please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduating class from Fort Zumwalt West High School for 2021. Thank you all so much. Audience, you are released. Students, let's try to have some order as we leave. Congratulations, and I'll see you at grad night.